Welcome to another episode of Financial 15. We're doing a new Becker or original series. We're looking at ways to fund your retirement. We'll have a number of videos on this topic. Today, we're starting with annuities. What are they? How can you use them in retirement? Lots of good information. You want to stick around. Yes, as we mentioned, another original series. And again, one of the most important topics we're always asked about retirement. How do you fund it? Or what are things that we got to deal with? Today, we are dealing with annuities. They have not been a popular topic, basically because interest rates have been low. But now that we see interest rates starting to move, inflation's around, these could be more appealing to you as you go down the road. But before we get into that, let's start, Clint. Let's go with making sure that if you want to find this video, Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, get all the information that you need to know. That's always perfect. Or like us on Facebook. Again, the final thing is go to our website at beckeror.com. We have all of this information and much, much more. But today we're dealing with annuities and funding your retirement. Clint, do we want to talk about what is an annuity? How does it work? What do we ought to look at? We got to go through all that. But you almost told, you almost forgot to tell people to subscribe. We don't want to miss that. So right. I wasn't going to subscribe. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing that sign. <laughs> But the starting point here, I think, before we get right into the new, we have to take a quick step back so we can understand uh -huh. the context here, like how does this come into retirement plan? It really starts off with having a plan and then some of the sources of retirement income. And in, this is a very simplistic view, but it gives you the idea. It gives you the big picture, right? You could have that uh, green box, which is the employer-provided pension. Maybe you get a pension through work. Those are going to be CPP, OAS, government pensions, and then that purple box, that per personal savings. All of that will combine to get you the income you need in retirement. The annuity falls into mm -hmm. that purple box, that personal savings, and we'll go through that in a moment. But I think a key here, Kevin, is before you really dive too deep into the products, into the details, you need to have an idea of the sources of income. And more importantly, you need to have an idea of that retirement income, that yellow circle. You need to have an idea of how much you need, right? What that budget is going to be. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the most important thing. I mean, you, you need to have a budget so you know exactly what you need your expenses for. Everybody would know, you know, I want this much money when I retire. Well, do you need that much money? Are you short? Are you, are you over? Biggest thing to know is what do you mm. think your expenses are going to be in, in retirement? And this can always be adjusted down the line, but based on that, Having that budget is very important because that defines what kind of products you can deal with. Is an annuity good for you or is it not something we should look at? Should we look at something with more or less risk depending on how things go? So the budget's the most important scenario that we want to start with based on that retirement income. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done other videos looking at uh, spending, looking at how to form budgets. You can certainly check those out. But dive into today's, to today's topic, which is annuities. We're assuming you've looked at the sources of income. You have an idea of how mm -hmm. much you need in retirement. Let's determine what an annuity is. We got to start there. And uh, yes. quite simply, you give money to the insurance company. It's an insurance product. The insurance company gives a guarantee in return, a series of payments. So maybe you give the insurance company a lump sum or payments over time, and then they guarantee yep. to give you a stream of income. So you give them a 250000 they're guaranteed to pay $1,000 a month for the rest of your life. That's generally the exchange. That's kind of what we're setting up here, the, the basic version of an annuity. And there's lots of different types. We're going to kind of go over a few of those different types, not get into the, the in, in nitty gritty details. Yeah. I think that will take us off topic, but we need to understand the basics here, Kevin. So walk us through this. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a variety of different types of annuities, but let's, let's just sort of touch on three of the big factors. I mean, the first one we want to deal with basically is the life annuity. And as you just mentioned, that's providing you guaranteed income for your life as long as you live. You have the ability to possibly outlive whatever you've put in. So, I mean, the big, pos or the big positives with this is that a life annuity is guaranteed for your life. That's the mm -hmm. big factor. So if you had, say, a quarter million dollars in there, but all of a sudden you're taking 500 out at the end, you've done the pro. Now, the con on that also is that, well, if you die early, then you're not getting anything near what you put in there. Yeah. So there is a difference that you have to look at for the life annuity. And that's, that's probably one of the most popular ones out there. But besides that, we also have others, don't we? There's term certain. There is term certain variable annuity, the term certain annuity. So life annuities for the entirety of your life. The insurance company says, as long as you live, we're going to give you this amount. And we're saying monthly, you can determine the frequency. Maybe you want a payment once a year, maybe you want it every three months, whatever. You can pick the frequency. We're assuming it's monthly term certain. It says we're going to do it for 10 years, 20 years, whatever that fixed period is. And if you die before that period is over, well, the insurance company is on the hook to keep paying. They'll pay your beneficiary or your estate. So the payments will continue until the end of that period. 
Now that works perfect because you, you, you're going to see your beneficiaries, your estate get money, except mm -hmm. if you die after the annuity is done. So you, <laughs> let's say you're 70, you get a 15 year term and you live beyond 85. Well, the money stops because they've met their term. They're not going to keep paying you. And now you've outlived the annuity. You're going to need additional sources of income. So there's pros and cons to each year. I'll quickly touch on the last one just because it's not as common, at least uh, for what we do for retirement, because it's essentially an investment. It, the yes. guarantees are different. There's a small portion that's guaranteed, but then the rest is going to vary depending on the rate of return of the investments. So you put money in, the insurance company does an investment. Investments do well, you could get more. Investments do poorly, you could get less. So it's not as certain. It's not as predictable of an no. income stream. Uh, so often we see the life annuities, the term certain annuities used more frequently when it comes to retirement income. But just to know that variable annuity it is out there. It is certainly one of the big three categories when it comes to annuities. So we'll flip it here. We talked high level, Kevin. What are some of the features people can put on these annuities? Well, yeah, and that's the big thing. I mean, similar to what you would get out of a pension plan, the way it seems to work is the more benefits that you put on to protect what you're getting from your payments, the lower your payment's actually going to be over time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways, as we mentioned, you can slice and dice the annuity. You can do it strictly on your life for however long you live, and that's it. Whatever happens to you, it's gone either early or late. That's going to give you probably the highest payment. But now all of a sudden, if you start adding in, you know, a survivor, if you join it with a spouse, depending on how much you want to put in there, do you want to defer the annuity payments? Do you want guaranteed periods? Do you want indexing? The more you add in, the lower your payments are going to be because basically those benefits that you're getting are going to prolong what you have for a certain period of time. So if that's the case, they're going to pay you a lot less coming out. So again, similar to what you probably get out of most pensions, these options are all available on most of these plans and you have to decide what's good for you, what's not, and, and work your way up from there. Yeah. You can think about it almost in terms of cost, right? You're adding all these extra yes. features. They're not free. There's going to be a cost and that cost will come in the form of a lower payment. So instead of getting $1,000 a month, maybe you only get $900 a month because you've added some of these extra benefits, that type of idea. The guaranteed period, I'll quickly note, because that is a common one. You get a life annuity, but maybe you say, I want a 10-year guarantee. So if I die in year eight, well, they're going to keep paying until that 10-year guarantee. So at least my beneficiaries are going to get some of the money. And quite frequently, you also see joint or survivor life annuities where maybe it's done on a couple. So if the husband dies, the money will keep being paid to their partner in some proportion, whether it's a full amount or two thirds or 50, whatever option you pick, but that's yeah. also a, a common one you see. And now how are these things taxed? We talked about some of the perks, but we all know <laughs> it's not free. There's gonna be some kind of taxation. So let's go over that, Kevin. How does it work for taxation of annuities? Well, taxation is basically similar to the way you would have it if it was non-annuity money. So if you have it in a registered account, RIFs, RSPs, Liras, LIFs, anything that comes out of there is listed as income. With the annuity, it is no different. If the money comes out of that registered product, it is taxed fully as income. You have to deal with it that way. TFSAs, since they are non-taxable, same scenario here. If it comes out of the TFSA, there is non-taxable at all. When it comes to the non-registered, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky. You can have basically one of two options that come around. There's what's known as non-prescribed and prescribed. Now, the non-prescribed method is basically blending the interest and the capital together. And the, the interest element, it's taxed as it accrues. So it's taxed high in the early years of the annuity and decreases over time as the capital gets paid out. So there's less to pay down the road. So you're usually paying higher in one end than the other. A lot of people don't like that aspect. And if you can get prescribed, which mm -hmm. certain criteria must be met before prescribed is done, but the pre prescribed basically what it does is it mixes it. It levels it out so that your taxable amount is basically the same and consistent through the entire time frame of the life of the annuity depending on how that annuity works. So it's very important to know that there are the two types in a non-registered product and how they both work. Yeah, so think about it like investments. You have investments in your yes. RIF, the money comes out, it's fully taxed. Same thing, you put an annuity in your RIF, fully taxed. Same kind of concept. So TFSA tax-free, and then Kevin explained the non-registered options there, and there are a couple. So we're going to go through an example, but before we do, I should mention that prescribed annuity. We talked about uh, the details there are just kind of high level how it works. We did a whole video yes. on prescribed annuities because when you level out the tax benefit there, there can be some additional perks to doing it that way. So you might want to check out that video on prescribed annuities if you haven't seen it already. But a quick example, and we got a couple of them here. We're going to scroll up to the top. This was done by Adam Buss. I should mention our wealth and estate planning specialist. Yes. He is insurance license. He got us a couple of quotes so we can use them as an example. The first one here is a simple life annuity. It's on Oh, pardon me. I grabbed a, a different one. This is a joint life yes. annuity. That's what we have on the screen. So you have two people there. You have a married couple, both 65. 
the uh, $250,000 non-registered. So we just mentioned the different tax items. This is non-registered money. You can see the monthly amount is $1,070.27. They've got a seven-year guarantee, which means if uh, something happens to both of them in the first seven years, there's still going to be money paid up until the end of that term. And then Kevin just talked about the different types of non-registered products. You got prescribed versus non-prescribed. This is a prescribed annuity. So we'll go down to the details here. You can see the monthly income, very consistent. It's guaranteed that $1,070 every month. single month. You can see the, the taxable amount here. That first number is a little lower simply because this was done as of March. So that first year is not a full year. Then you see the full year. And because it's prescribed, they level it out. So it's the same amount every year. So it doesn't vary. The taxable bit would be the same yep. every year for the prescribed annuity. Now, is this a good thing, Kevin? Are people making money, losing money? How can you tell? Well, I mean, and that's the biggest factor, right? It is how can you tell whether or not there's money being made or not? I mean, you've got a consistent payout each and every year. Now, theoretically speaking, it's not growing with inflation. So you're probably mm -hmm. seeing that, you know, dollars going down the road, a thousand today may not be worth a thousand 20 years from now. So, but you're still paying the same tax rate. So as we see, you are though consistently getting the income that's coming in. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? If you live to a certain point of time and you outlive it, then yeah, I mean, basically around that 2042 point is where we're looking sort of around that break even time frame. The money you put in is the money you got out based on where that is. So, I mean, it, it's, it's hit and miss depending on where you are in that sort of scenario. But again, you have to look at things like what are indexing things? How do we want to deal with that? Is this something that's going to be good for me compared to anything else that I'm getting from my retirement income? Exactly. And if you live to a very long age, well, it could be a phenomenal investment. If you live to 102, yep. or you're getting paid the whole way through. So you get a phenomenal amount of money from uh, the insurance company. One more quick example here. This one sure. is the, the single life annuity. So it's just in one individual. Again, 250000 This time it's a RIF. So it's just coming out of a registered account. Also this time you can see 2% every year of indexing. So the amount they receive changes every year goes up by 2% because they're having a cost to live an adjustment here. We're talking about all those different features. You can hear, see this one has the index and worked in. And now the income changes. It starts at 1100, then mm -hmm. it goes up a little bit, goes up a little bit every year. You can see it increasing. And now because it's a RIF, whatever the full year is. So in 2027, the quote here is that they'll get 12, 15, 12, 14 per month. That's 14, 525 for the year. That full amount is taxable because it's a RIF. Like Kevin explained earlier, Anything that comes out of RIF is fully taxable. Fully but you can taxable. see right off the hop, the amount is higher. That joint yep. annuity we just looked at had a lower payment because there's a joint annuity here. We have a single individual, higher payment uh, be because of the options we picked. And again, you put 250000 in. You can see the column here, the cumulative payout. You get over the 250 here in roughly, call it 16 years. And well, if you live you know, way down here until 2062, well, you get <laughs> 800 grand out of that. That's a pretty good deal. That's huge. 50 in. 800 out. So it depends when you pass away what the ultimate rate of return will be. And that kind of leads to a question here. This isn't really about people buying a rate of return because you don't know that number. No. Uh, it depends on when you pass away. So who is this for, Kevin? Wh who would be considering annuities? This is more for those that want that safety and security factor. Those that are looking for sort of that pension that may not happen. This way, you know, you've got a consistent payment coming in each month, whether it's a set payment, whether it's an index payment, and depending on how the taxes go, prescribed, non-prescribed and non-registered accounts. This is something that, you know, you've got a guarantee amount coming to you. You've got certain specifics. So you're not worried about whether your investments are fluctuating up or down. Will I be able to make my payments next month? It gives you that safety factor to make sure that, you know, I'm going to get this amount of money, probably more conservative and especially over the last number of years, because it's based on interest rates and how those payments work out. So if you were really doing the annuity, you were more about your safety and security than you were about how the growth of the investments would go. So that's one of the main places that we want to look at who this is for. Yeah. And you hit a key point there. Interest rates are key. So those payouts that insurance companies, they have a big formula in the background there. They have actuaries helping determine the numbers. The higher rates go, Interest rates, usually you have higher payments on your annuities. The yes. lower rates go typically lower payments on your annuities. So recently in a low rate environment, annuities haven't been as attractive. But again, I agree with you. It's probably more about safety, security. That's likely what people are looking for when it comes to annuity. One more quick point before we go. Those things are insured. They're insurance companies that offer them and say, well, yep. all guarantees aren't the same. What if I get it from some random insurance company and they disappear? They go bankrupt while well, there is protection. Similar to your bank account or your investment account will have protection. The assurance protection offers protection against that event. Depends on the dollar figure. If your payment is under 2000 fully protected. Above 2000 
you have an 85% protection there. So we'll leave it there, Kevin. But if someone has an extra question, where should they go? They should go visit chatwithclintonandkevin.com. We are more than happy to answer any of your questions you have on annuities or anything else in our series on how to fund your retirement. These are important lessons to learn. Always, again, please check out our website. Go to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Other than that, that's it for retirement today. Take care. We'll see you soon.